don't mind me I'm cooking and um, because it's a nice sunny day I don't know if you can see that I'm using the solar power to uh, cook a cake um, it's more to life than droning but anyway I just wanted to uh, talk to you about advanced piloting moves this is gonna be maybe a series of um, videos where I'll try and teach uh, some basic moves and hopefully you can um, learn from it and grow as a pilot um, let's just say the reason why I I'm doing this is because um, I'm seeing loads of loads of um, drone footage and they're usually basically the same meaning that um, everybody's moving forward everybody's going backwards doing the old side shuffle and yeah it's all right but I come from a action pilot um, standpoint so yeah I, I I do appreciate the landscape uh, videographers but I think they need to mix and match and I thought this new series of videos may help may not but uh, let's just try it anyway uh, one of the first um, basic maneuvers for, for cinematic um, drone pilots is to try and use some sort of maneuver which goes around a person or subject and this is called the orbit now the orbit is well it's it's just a showcase and it's just a way to show you the subject all around 360 if you would like and this helps to establish the person or set up the shot now you can do this automatically with with um, with the automatic um, programmed moves from a drone but um, from there it gets boring once you've passed a few seconds of footage with this so I yeah I yeah I recommend you use it first just to learn the dynamics of flight but um, once you go beyond you know a few uh, videos you want to try and mix and match your your footage uh, for this I'm, I'm suggesting that you should do manual f flying and manual orbits because from there on your circle isn't perfect but then again it, it's not supposed to be it's it's supposed to be reacting to the the speed of the craft or or the environment and from there on you can actually um, tailor make your orbit to the subject and the environment and this makes it more exciting because you're you're quickening the pace you're, you're slowing down you're you're trying to be dynamic towards the situation and from there on um it's it's basically a show about the subject and you're telling a story partly through the power of flight really and the camera angles and, and how it reacts to the light so i wouldn't knock the um manual orbit on its head uh, just because it's just a single movement because from that single movement you can tell a lot you can go and change your altitude you can actually fall in altitude which is a more advanced maneuver but i'll explain that how to do that at another time i just wanted to go about um telling you how important that the orbit maneuver is and one day once you've learned how to do that you can go and change your orbit diameter your orbit diameter compared to the background
can be determined uh, on your skill level. And sometimes people have low skills, but they have a large orbit around the subject, which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's good to have a large background over a small subject. For those like landscape um, reveals, if you will. But for me, I prefer to do a mixture of, of, of a close orbit and a far away orbit because it shows some dynamics. I mean, you can go from close to far, which is one way of doing it. But um, it's a skill in itself if you were doing close orbits because this requires a different type of skill requires you to slow down, it requires you to be precise and also learning how to do that you've got to figure out how to orbit without jerkiness because it amplifies a lot um, during this close orbit and it takes some skill and it takes patience I guess to go around the whole person and it's not always a not always a, a simple push of a button really you've got to be dynamic in the closeness of it all and you've got to figure out wind conditions and speed of the vessel or subject you're flying so there's there's that compared to a, a big diameter orbit which is yeah you will still get wind conditions and you still get the speed but um You've got a lot of screen size, or you've got a lot of screenplay where the subject will be moving along as fast as it can, and you're moving along as fast as it can, and you've got, you know, so many seconds, so many, um, so much time just to basically figure out where you're going to turn, how, and you can predict it more when the subject is small compared to the background then you are with the subject large and being close and these are the factors that you're going to have to simply learn and to do that you're going to have to learn certain techniques okay we're going to determine um, techniques for left and right hand the right hand when you go in at speed you can actually use the thumb and which is okay because uh, you want to get the maximum speed and you slow down and from there to there the distance uh, needs to be fairly quick so using a thumb like this you can control it for most orbits your controlling uh, is very swift and fast because you're going to have to compensate for the wind and you've got to compensate for the uh, speed of the orbit which can go from there to about there or or in between and if you're changing direction as well you're going to have to go like that fairly quickly within a second or so uh, technique is fairly quick and easy uh, there's not much skill in that and these are for large orbits for small orbits it's it's a completely different thing because um, from there you're gonna have to learn smaller movements smaller and precise movements as you can see I'm pinching this leaving this finger to control exposure or zoom if you're using the Mavic 2 and you've got the picture um, the photo button as well. So this can button, this finger here, is controlling um, both controls here, if need be. Now, for the rudder movements, it's fairly easy. All, all you have to do is use this all the time. And because I'm using this all the time, my rudder movements are very, very slow because compared to the um, right stick, you only need to move the craft or turn the craft very, very slowly as you go around the orbit. Uh, speed, you don't need to. 
and you've got to remember that so you got to be really calm and collected with this left hand whereas the right hand you can go you know really fast on or really slow as well as that you've got the up and down movements now this is a skill in itself because once you learn how to very so gently go a few millimeters this way or a few millimeters that way you've got to figure out how to um, dive do a, a decreasing orbit or increasing orbit and this you get disoriented so you've got to figure out how to move the joystick diagonally which is going against the grain sometimes because this left and right and up and down it's fairly easy but going diagonal is a bit tricky so you've got to learn this these techniques of going applying this cross like figure and if you wanted to I mean on a on a bored day when you're not flying you can figure out if you can perform this cross like figure uh, as a practice um, thing like if you're watching television and your your fingers are a bit fiddly just take out your joystick and figure out how to do this cross I guarantee you'll your spiraling orbits, your orbits that descend or ascend will improve a lot if you just figure out how to do diagonal crosses. Again, when you're pinching, you need the second finger here to be, uh, in this case, moving the tilt. And this is an this can be a tricky thing in itself. The third finger, you've got to figure out if you can touch the C1 or the C2 button. Uh, and you've got all these controls, diagonal, uh, photo taking, or video, and then the uh, tilts. The tilt in itself is, is more involved with the rudder as well, because as you're going down, you need to adjust the horizon. Uh, this is a very tricky thing, especially if you're trying to not move this thumb and finger while you're moving this. Of course, you'll get the telemetry of your heights going up and down, and from there on, you've got to figure out what's the lowest value you can get your drone so it doesn't crash maneuver of orbit is learning to turn left and doing the opposite with the rudder turn right and doing the opposite with the rudder but remember this is a large movement and this is a very very small movement and to adjust the speed on that, you've got to go faster here while proportionally going a bit further to the extremes here. So when you do your orbits, you're adjusting your circular um, pattern for a smaller circular pattern by the speed of this rotation and there we have it and that's all bits for you uh, thanks for watching anyway uh, and I hope you uh, enjoyed this video because yeah, it's a new direction I thought I'll try and make it's basically me trying to figure out uh, particular cinematic movers and try and present them as uh, a particular thing you can you can try to do it's um me trying to describe uh, the different many different aspects of, of drone flying 
so that you can understand fully what dream flying is all about. It's not just turning the joystick left and right and figuring out, oh, it does that, being reactionary. For me, dream flying is trying to figure out where you want to go and where you want to be and understanding how it is and executing it after the thought. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to be presenting a few more um, different manoeuvres. I'm going to pre be presenting um, the inner workings of how uh, the uh, transmitter and, and how the drone works in, in principles. And I hope you can enjoy and continue watching and subscribing to my videos. Thanks very much. I'll see you again. Cheers.